Well, French filmmaker Pascal Lamcher won the Best Director Award at the prestigious Sundance Film Festival for her work on the documentary Winnie. She says it offered a unique perspective on Mamwini Madagizela Mandela's life. Lamcher joins us now this evening from London. Pascal, thank you so much for your time on the program this evening. How lovely to have you. Now, as a foreign Thanks, filmmaker, what drew you to the subject matter, first of all? Well, I've made several films in South Africa before, and my partner, Peter Makarube, who is, who's late, who died very early, sadly, in the process of making the film, um, had for 10 years been trying to persuade me that this was the most important film to be made about the history of South Africa. I'd made a film about Sophia Town, I'd made a film about the Ravonia trial, I'd made a film about Soweto in the 10 years from um, Nelson Mandela's release from prison through to um, 2000. So he was always on to me about that. And of course, as I traveled in the world and experienced the kind of entrenched narrative and very negative narrative um, that was out there, um, it became increasingly um, a, a, a film and a story that in my view and in obviously in his needed to be told. Yeah, but by the time you engaged with Winnie Madigazella Mandela, she'd already have lived through the worst of apartheid. Uh, she'd been forged in the fires of struggle. What kind of woman did you come face to face with, Pascal? She was amazing. I mean, just as her great-grandchildren are saying, she was fantastically charismatic, warm, kind, um, open. And what I realized throughout the process of making this film was that her political convictions her as a socialist and a feminist um, had never somehow changed. Um, and so for me, it was very interesting to see how, as I tried to contextualize her historically and politically, how I could trace that narrative, which was quite different um, from the narrative that had, had been pushed out there into the world. How open was she with you in revealing herself to the world through this documentary? Well, I initially approached her through her daughter, Zinzi, who, of course, vetted me first and needed to know that I was not simply going in to try and sort of grab something, but I was going to be um, a serious, you know, I was going to engage very seriously with the story. Um, so I came with, with that backing, if you like. Um, and she very quickly, I mean, we had a series of interviews, four interviews over a period of two years. Um, and at each interview, we deepened um, somewhat the, the sort of the engagement with her story. And obviously the first, at the first interview, she was still in mourning for Madiba who had um, died. Um, and, you know, she was in, she was in that space, um, and I was approaching her as someone who's very interested to know and res and sort of respect her as also um, a military leader, um, uh, a leader of the underground military wing of the ANC. I was interested in exploring all of that. Um, so each time we spent time together, uh, we we sort of we deepened our relationship, and it was you know a phenomenal uh, obviously experience for me, and I and I hope the film attests to that. Yeah, the, the story of Stompy Sepe has of course become a defining moment in the minds of many who saw Madagisela Mandela as an ungovernable woman. Without revealing the details of what you uncovered in your investigation, because of course that will be revealed in our airing of the documentary tonight, would you say you were able to unearth the truth around Sepe's killing? Absolutely. I mean, I hope it's clear enough in the film. It's The film is only 84 minutes long. I'm planning to do a, a six-part series, a really big investigation into it, in which I can really explain things from beginning to end. Uh, but of course, I was making the film for international broadcasters. Um, and at that time, at that early stage, um, there was no South African backing to the film. So I, in the film, I think I hope when you see it, it will be clear enough that um, Jerry Richardson uh, killed Stompy Sipe. He killed Stompy Sipe to cover his tracks. He was a paid informant um, and an agent for the, um, for the apartheid state. Um, he went to jail for it. 
and in the film you will see a number of other revelations that um, emerge as a consequence of that even later on in the story. Uh, Pascal, critics of your documentary say it's unashamedly pro winny How easy was it for you to find balance in telling this story? Well, of course, the balance came from um, a four-year engagement with the story, with the film, with the, with the struggle to make the film. Um, obviously, the film itself is only one part of the story. In evaluating and weighing up everything else which is not yet in the film, um, I came to the conclusion that the most important thing was for the first time to give um, another perspective on uh, Winnie's story because what had been going out into the world for so many decades was a sort of palimpsest, a layering of disinformation, smear campaign, um, really terrible dealings um, that were layered one on top of each other so no one could see the truth anymore. And everybody was quoting, and I'm here, I'm talking about journalists um, in the main who don't, are not able to dig very deep. I was able to dig very deep because I'm a historian, I'm a filmmaker, I had the time and the inclination and I worked very hard. Um, so in my conclusions, um, I felt it was important and also that was my own um, vision, if you like, of um, Winnie and her contribution to the struggle and the way she had been treated um, and as a significant, very significant um, political figure and a female political figure, the way I felt um, she had been politically neutralized uh, was a very interesting uh, and troubling story that needed to be told and wasn't a story that had uh, been shown uh, before. Yeah, that gives rise to an important question. Why do you believe both apartheid security forces and post-democratic forces actually targeted Winnie Madagizela Mandela with the sole aim of discrediting her seemingly? Well, I think she represented, she wasn't the only person, but she was the most vociferous person. She was in the townships, she was amongst her pe people, she was the only one who was allowed uh, in a way to to, to speak, uh, to speak about the ANC, to stand up on podiums and wear the ANC colours uh, and shout about it. She had a certain form of protection, in my belief, in, in my view, uh, from the fact that the Kennedys had um, visited her in Branford when she was sent off into exile. You know, the, the apartheid government hoped that they would, by exiling her there, um, that she would disappear in the midst, midst you know, in the mists of history, the way that Nelson had been, um, you know, put onto Robin Island and 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 silenced so effectively there. Um, but when the Kennedys came, and of course they were, and this was after both JFK and 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 Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated, that it was such a significant. Um, it wasn't anyone who was coming to 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 visit Winnie there. And that, I think, created a certain sort of protective shield, even though, of course, we know that both the, the American government and the British government at that time, if we're talking about Ronald Reagan and, and Margaret Thatcher, were very keen on propping up um, the apartheid government as it stood. Um, so um, Winnie was uh, special, and she, she, she played a really, really critical role um, and she was more socialist leaning, she was more left leaning in the ANC. And in the long period of, of um, as people prepared uh, on both sides, if you like, of the apartheid divide for the inevitable, which was the coming of democracy and first of all, the, the, the release of Nelson Mandela, uh, Winnie and her, what she represented in the country um, was uh, was was a critical problematic. Um, so this, the the a more centrist road was what was um, required. And um, I I think you'll see in the documentary in the film that you're about to watch um, how and to a degree how that was how that was managed. There's, of course, a constant tension throughout the love story of Winnie Madigizela and Nelson Mandela that remains unresolved in the minds of many now that both have passed on, Pascal. What were her feelings about her former husband in her final years? Oh, 
I mean, I, I'm not necessarily the best person place to, to speak of this, but the love was there um, always uh, on both sides. And I, and I hope that what comes out of this film is uh, what Zinzi speaks in the film, which is to say that the combination of both her parents um, you know, who were cast as sort of so shockingly as the, as as the, she puts it, as the saint and the sinner, that actually the two together was what South Africa needed. Uh, they loved each other. They were comrades. They were politically. Um, they wanted the same thing for the country, um, and really they should have been able to stay together that the two perspectives um, needed to be joined, that that dialogue between those two perspectives needed to continue. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, with us, Pascal.